Committee on Water, Land, and Committee on Ocean Marine Resources and Hawaiian Affairs. It's Friday, February 15th. We're convening uh, for three items on our agenda. Uh, it's uh, for decisions only. On House Bill 1255 relating to land use was a bill to establish the Honokoha Marina Community Development District on the island of Hawaii under the Hawaii Community Development Authority. At this time, members uh, will be deferring the bill. On House Bill 1327, oh, yes. Um, for Ocean um, Marine Resources and Hawaiian Affairs, same decisions to defer. Mahalo. Thank you, Chair. On House Bill 1327, relating to state agencies, increases the membership of BLNR, Commission on Water Resource Management, and LUC, respectively, to include a member to represent the interests of OHA. Uh, the recommendation is to pass this out with an HD1 to um, uh, take into account that the water code does address the issue of uh, Native Hawaiian representation on the board, so we're going to take that recommendation to remove that. Um, also on the Land Use Commission, um, there's also mention of uh, someone with a uh, Hawaiian cultural uh, background, so we'll remove <coughs> that. But we do want to move forward with the membership of the Board of Land and Natural Resources and add, uh, but instead a member, uh, instead of someone from the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, we want language that it talks yeah. about, um, the correct language would read, at least one member of the board shall have demonstrated expertise in Native Hawaiian traditional and customary practices and as evidenced by, and in the evidence by there's two subsections. One is about a college degree the, or the second one is about work history. Mm -hmm. So in the first one we will add language or a degree in Hawaiian studies, Native Hawaiian traditional and customary practices or a related subject area. Uh, regarding work history, it will say work history is sufficient to demonstrate an appropriate level of knowledge in the subject of land and natural resources or Native Hawaiian traditional and customary practices as relevant, including parks and recreation, public lands management, natural reserves, aquatic resources, boating and recreation, forestry and wildlife, water resource management, conservation and resources, or Native Hawaiian traditional and customary practices. Uh, so uh, then we defective date at July 1, 2020 uh, to keep this moving forward. Members, any questions? Okay, if not. Okay, for um, Ocean Marine Resources and Hawaiian Affairs, um, same recommendation. Okay, Vice Chair Lowen. Voting on House Bill 1327, the recommendation is to pass with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Representative Kaufman? Aye. Representative Cullen? Aye. Representative Hanahano? Aye. Representative Kawakami? Excused. Representative Lee? Excused. Representative Fale? Aye. Representative Thielen? Aye. Chair, the recommendation is adopted. Okay, for the um, Ocean Marine Resources and Hawaiian Affairs, um, by same recommendation, Vice Chair, take the vote. Uh, Board of Age uh, members, House Bill 1327, noting similar members in the Waterland Committee. And noting excused members, Kalkami and Lowen, and with the exclusion of Representative Thielen, because she's not on the committee. Um, chair, all members vote aye. Measures adopted. Thank you. And the last measure is House Bill 1064 related to ceded lands. Um, I conferred with the chair of Ocean Marine Resources and Hawaiian Affairs, and uh, we concurred that we could uh, write a resolution, and I can have. Chair Anohano explain more about the resolution, but at this time on this bill, House Bill 1064, the recommendation is to defer. Yes, um, thank you, Chair. On House Bill 1064, because we had a lot of good discussions on ceded lands and whether it had an inventory or not, according to our understanding, 97% of ceded lands already have been inventoried. So um, moving this um, forward, we're gonna do a resolution requesting the LNR to inventory the last three percent or whatever the leftover of lands that need to be inventoried so we can have a, a baseline to work from and making sure that our all of our lands are intact and we're not losing from the 1.3 million acres that were assigned as ceded lands. 
Thank you. Thank you. The joint uh, committees are we're adjourned. Testing, 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 there we go. Thank you. Okay, the Committee on Water, Land, and Committee on Ocean, Marine Resources, and Hawaii Affairs is convening for the 1040 agenda on Friday, February 15th. We have two bills under consideration. The first one, House Bill 1423, is relating to the Mala Wharf Task Force. Uh, Tori Abraham, support Department of Land and Natural Resources. Madam Chair, um, the, the department stands in opposition uh, to this. We just want to note, as in our written testimony, that there was a feasibility study undertaken as a part of the Lahaina Ferry Pier project in 2006, 2007. And the um, comments by in that study uh, did not uh, recommend um, re reconstruction mm -hmm. of the Mala, the Mala Wharf Pier. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Can you stay one moment? Just in case, is anybody else here to testify? Okay, if not, members' questions? Yes, um, please, Representative Kaufman. Thank you, Chair. Can you just uh, reiterate your testimony? Kind of oh. was over pretty quick there. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the, the, um, there, there was the, uh, as part of the proposed Lahaina Boat Ferry Pier project, there was a environmental impact statement that was mm -hmm. published. Um, in, the, um, in the report there, it stated that the um, and I'm quoting out of my, my testimony, the Mala Wharf site alternative was not deemed feasible due to ocean conditions that make the new pier unsafe during severe ocean swells. Uh, the high cost of demolishing the existing wharf and construction of a new pier and mm -hmm. support facilities. The potential adverse impacts to the marine ecosystem caused by the construction of the new walkway, uh, walkway and pier. The potential adverse impacts to the numerous burials in and adjacent to the existing parking lot and known cultural layers caused by the construction of landside support facilities. Um, it further says that uh, to make the Mala Wharf operational, uh, f f this is just for the Inner Island Ferry Service, will require the following improvements, uh, demolishing the existing wharf, construction of a new concrete walkway and pier, construct a ferry terminal building and waiting area for ferry operations and passenger service, construct offsite parking area and repave existing parking areas construct sewer pump out on the new uh, concrete pier, construct new individual wastewater system, extend utility services to the end of the new wharf with an estimated cost of $12.6 million. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Yes. Any more questions, members? Yeah. 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 Representative Cohen. Um, this was uh, the, um, the cost of $12.6 million, and this is the report as I read it was, it was, in your testimony, it said the report was in 2006. Right. Right. So, um, and you guys standing by the 2006 report. And, yes. So, if you was to take, uh, with, cr I guess, the current prices on construction, would the same project still cost $12.6 million in 2012? I, I think it would probably be a little bit more. On, and then, the, the, one, the one thing I want to, um, I, I, in, in researching this is that, uh, one of the issues with like the repaving of the parking lot and the expansion of the parking area is that there's actually um, they actually know of burials underneath okay. the, the asphalt okay. there. Yeah. Okay. So it may not just be the money. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Does anyone else have questions? I have. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just want to have one. Yes. So if we don't fix this dilapidated wharf, um, how do we? make sure the public is safe due to safety and health and sanitation reasons. I mean, because you're not going to fix it, right? Yeah. So how can we be sure the public that are using the area yeah. don't get into the issues of safety, 
health issues and sanitation issues. Do you have a bathroom there? There is a comfort station at the Mala um, facility. Um, it's like there's, I think, two stalls on each side. I haven't been okay. in there and a while. This is, this is portable or this no, is? No, no, this is a structure. Structure, yeah. okay. Yeah. Like the park fence structure, yeah. yeah? So, I mean, my concern is this because if you're not fixing that area, how can we protect the, the public to be safe when they enter that area? Um, I'm, on a, I, I'm an accountant by trade, so if I get too yeah, detailed. <laughs> the actual area, it, the existing parking lot and comfort station are already there. Um, you and know, they're okay. And they're okay. They're okay for the public. Yeah, we're use. just talking about the the the, the pier itself. Okay. And then if you're gonna, the, the, you know, you have to understand the objective of this study was what what happens if we bring, we reconstruct the pier and now all of a sudden we have bigger boats coming in. What do we do with the exist the existing comfort station will not be able to handle the increase right, in capacity. capacity. Um, we're going to have to redo the parking lot to handle them. If you're going to have bigger boats to bring more passengers in there, you might have to bring buses in. The buses won't be able to get in there because the parking lot is not suitable for it. Um, and, and that type of thing. So when, once you increase the capacity by increase by putting the pier into play, the existing structure and facilities, the existing facilities won't be enough to handle the uh, yeah. increased capacity. And I understand that. Yeah. So what if we just do the um, facial... Um, repair and maintenance of the wharf just for the <coughs> small boat owners instead of looking at the large commercial tourist type? One of the things that when I was discussing with the engineering um, people is that one of the problems with, with the wharf as it is right now is that there's no breakwater oh, okay. at the wharf. Okay. The breakwater is around the ramp, so the ramp users are going to be protected from swells. It mm -hmm. is not necessarily true for the people using the wharf. In fact, that was brought out in the study that one of the first, I think when they they built it in 1928 or so, that was one of the issues that um, affected the wharf then was that there's no, that the boats would go with the swell, you know. Mm -hmm. Right, and so do you have the data of the amount of people that use this area? Uh, no, I don't. The data I users, I mean, because if it is a place that, it, that people like to go and there's a lot of usage in the area, then we cannot just be leaving this wharf you know, like an eyesore, yeah. or, I mean, you know, it, because it, it kind of <laughs> brings down the spirit of, you know, the land and right. the people, so, is there another way that we can look at it just to make it usable, but don't have to be for the large capacity type? We can, I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to looking at it, I think yeah. that, um, one of the things I found out about the ocean is that there's coral in the ocean, oh, and the, so you have the coral. The area. coral is on the the coral is on the wharf, and um, that may be an issue. Okay. Yeah. So if that is the case, that to me, you know, because you have the coral already on the wharf, then maybe we should just do a preservation, conservation type of mm -hmm. um, permit for it, so that it would be like a historical vahipana or something. Yeah. yeah. I'm open to that. I mean, and then the cost wouldn't be as great as yeah. what they're looking at. Yes, I think the the whole point of this thing was, uh, excuse me, the study was uh, that what would be the cost of reconstructing the pier to make right. it usable if we were just going to leave it as is then and, and post, signif post the warnings and make sure it's safeguarded. Yeah. You know, I think the, co the cost goes down on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I believe, you know, I think this, I think the bill as written is really the intention to have community input and go out mm -hmm. uh, to the public meeting. Full service bankruptcy. Is there something you need to tell me? No, uh, it's yes, it's cost. just started showing up. Actually, Google goes through every single word of your Gmail and you use the community may want a, a small pier to be able to take their children sure. out yeah. and throw throw, you know, do a little fishing for the day. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, maybe you know, canoe news, you know, I mean, you just don't know. And so I think we really want to move this out because this is about the community dialoguing with mm -hmm. you. And given that you've done so much studies, I think you can go out very prepared right. uh, to give them information. Uh, and the reality is um, if there needs to be a breakwater and the community really wants it, then that's a whole discussion right. with yeah. the congressional delegation sure. and the U.S. Corps of Engineers. And we'll let our congressional de delegation yeah. weigh in on it at that right. time right. 
uh, if they really want to pursue a breakwater for this area. So I think that we need to let the community really engage in this. So it's our intent, to, you know, that we're going to. I, I move think it you may be. I'm sorry, I cut yeah. you off. Yeah, no, that's okay. I, I think it might be good if you know we. we I mean, these, the, everything can be presented. And we can put everything on the table. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. a nice yes. community yeah. meeting where people weigh in and then yes. period of comments. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Representative Cohen. Um, in the um, bill itself, it says the members of the task force shall serve without compensation, but shall be reimbursed for, for travel and other necessary expenses incurred in the performance of their duties. So that means the DLNR would cover uh, any travel expense for the members on the task force. That's what the bill sounds okay. like. Okay. I, I, you know, I just I mean, wanted to make sure because. Do you yeah. know what the figure would be? Um, not, his bill isn't going to finance, so I just wanted to make sure yeah. that it was. You know, I don't. Really, I, I can only speak for what I know that it's going to cost for the state. If I have to fly someone from Honolulu, it's going to be, you know, the airfare oh, per okay. diem. I like, mean, but it's minimum cost. I mean, it's yeah. not like it's going to be a big, you know. Twenty-five thousand. Yeah. Plus, I hope they're going out yeah. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You, <laughs> oh, you have to go out anyway yeah. into the state. Yeah, and I think you yeah. know, if you get yeah. the feel of the community, they want yeah. it. Fine. If they don't want it, well, then you already know what you have to do. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Did anyone else have questions? Okay. Thank you, members. We'll move on to House Bill 738 related to land use, which was requiring the counties to allow construction of accessory dwelling units on lots on which a residential dwelling unit is permitted except for lots situated on state agricultural land in any county with a population of 500,000 or fewer persons. So members on this particular bill, um, we have about 34 testifiers and um, everybody except for two people were in opposition. The other two people provided comments. So what I'm going to do is quickly call out the names of people who send in testimony. If you're in the audience, please let me know so we can invite you up. Office of Planning, comments. Department of Planning and Permitting, opposition. Hawaii Thousand Friends, opposition. Hawaii Appleseed Center, ah, I take that back, one in support. Keep it Kailua, opposed. County Council of the County of Maui, opposed. And the rest are all in opposition. And it's Alicia Morier, Anne-Marie Kirk. Avi Oaken, Barb Cuddens, Kaki Kennedy, M.S. Matson, Shannon Rudolph, Robert Freitas Jr., Dana Moss, Dick Tran, Donald Tran, Jamie Schwartz, John Connors, Julian Gimon, Penny Silva, Sam Crisanto, Sue Fom, Cy Nathan, Tom Mui, Tia Kent, T.J. Sims, Tran Quinn, D. Corcoran, C. Kong, G. Pedro Tama, Sidney Crawl Jr., and Lance Duncan provided comments. Kathleen Pai Nui, opposition. Is there anybody else here who wish to testify? Yes, please. Please come up. Good morning, Chair and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Ursula Retterford, and I have lived in Kailua for the past 40 years. And I am speaking in opposition to the bill. I did send in a short testimony. Um, I really find this bill outrageous. Uh, it is a nil conceived piece of legislation that goes counter to good planning. It makes a mockery of our Oahu General Plan and our Sustainable Communities Plan, which were put in place to guide the development of our island. It is an affront to the efforts of so many good men and women who devoted years of their lives to establish these plans and put forth a sensible land use vision. It undermines all residential zoning, ignores the environmental, social, and economic impacts, and the ability of the infrastructure to accommodate the needs of a possible doubling of the population. Note that when Ohana units were permitted years ago, some neighborhoods were denied permits because of the lack of sewer capacity. Mm. And no uh, additional sewers have been installed since that I'm aware of. Um, this bill also violates the rights of those who bought, bought into single family residential zoning. It usurps county home rule and their right to determine what the best use of their land is. In some, 
This is one of the most egregious and worst anti-planning bills that I have seen being introduced. I'm all for affordable housing, but this is hardly a sane way to go about it. Uh, it has to do more with speculation than it has to do with solving the affordable housing problem. Note that many of the Johanna units permitted some years ago today function as illegal short-term vacation units, driving up rents and house prices for local residents and contributing to the very problem of homelessness. Please <coughs> reject this bill and respect home rule by the counties, our development plans, and the right of due process by people who bought into single-family residential zoning. So thank you very much. Thank you for the time and coming to I, the Capitol. I am surprised that there are not more people here to um, testify against this bill. And so I don't know. Most of them are probably not aware. And some who are aware have become so cynical of government. So they feel so powerless. They don't, they don't see why they should take their time to come and testify when they often lose. So they are discouraged. That's my okay. view. Can you stay one moment? I have one question. Members, any? may I? My last question. How did you hear about this bill? Somebody sent me an email. Oh my God. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, anyone else wish to testify? Margaret Willey, uh, resident of Big Island, testifying on my own behalf. A, um, a member of the County of Hawaii County Council, uh, District 9, North and South Kohala. Um, I just want to support the previous testimony um, and in opposition and just in general stress the point of home rule um, and just encouraging that we work together um, and, uh, you know, on the county council, we're where, at least in my constituents, can come and speak um, and voice their opinion and work with you all and not have rules that say, um, I mean, I'm not sure this bill would apply to our county right now. It's, you know, whatever population it is that uh, it would be. Um, and allow the people to have some say. It, it concerns me where we sort of pick out pet projects or pet issues, like this is, this is for affordable housing, this is for the Hawaiians, this is for education, and do something that's off the wall. Uh, you know, it, let's put, um, don't you, I mean, the, and other bills, whether it's uh, where there are schools and if we deny putting in a affordable housing units, we're against education. So I just am concerned when there's sort of um, here something that we all care about, shelter for our people, and the great cost if uh, the environmental or cultural issues and checklists, we need to address those where there's a problem, um, where there are you have to do double pane windows. I mean, there are things that are wrong, but you don't do it where sort of saying <coughs> the people have the right to do X and regardless of what the county says or what the layer of government. So I um, speak in opposition. Thank you to the previous testifier. I'm here to a attend a meeting with the Consulate General, or General of Japan and I just oh, am available to, so I'm just sitting in on this meeting um, as an opportunity. So thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Yes, please, Shannon. Good afternoon, <coughs> Madam Chair, members of the committee. My name is Shannon Wood, and I am the uh, president and co-founder of the uh, Windward Ahupua Alliance and the co-founder of a no longer existing organization called the Windward Homeless Coalition. Uh, however, because of the fact that this particular piece of legislation has caused a great deal of concern uh, amongst a lot of other people, um, that uh, I am on uh, Senator Suzanne Chen Oakland's um, 
a working group on um, affordable housing and homelessness issues, and this, we, in the discussions of the group, it caused a great deal of concern about not only just the home rule issue, the fact is, is what it does is it essentially kicks out the the government from addressing the, you know, both the county and the state government are truly addressing the issue of affordable housing, workforce housing, and homelessness issues. And that's why I oppose this. I have been working across the street with, um, with uh, Council Member Kaika Anderson, who chairs his own <laughs> planning committee, and he, I, he said that if this bill continues to move forward, and the, the Senate version does, is, is moving forward as well, he will definitely be coming over here. The other big issue was that former Council Member uh, Tom Berg wanted this bill to be, but only talking about Oahu now, was to put it on ag land way out in the boonies someplace so that no one would be, have to be forced to see homeless people anymore. And now that there is a bill that is just going to be introduced next week to kick people out of the sidewalks and other places and the, uh, the city parks and the other pu public places, you know, this, this bill sounds like a very attractive way of, of dealing with them. Uh, former Council Member Berg's uh, bill did die, but it's, the concept is still alive. And unfortunately, what this would do is bring it back to life. So I, I strongly urge that you, you know, there, are, uh, there are a wide range of issues here, but the big issue is that neither the county nor the state are addressing the issue that this uh, attends, which is workforce, affordable, and home uh, housing and uh, facilities for people who are, um, um, you know, who are homeless. Thank you very much. Thank you. Members, um, the, cha the, the chairs have conferred on this particular bill. We'll be deferring it, but this may be an opportunity to ask some questions, if you wish, on this issue. Um, if not... If not, we are going to move in, uh, go ahead and move into decision making. So House Bill 1423 HD1 relating to the Mala Wharf Task Force, the recommendation is to pass out as is. No. It's already got a defective date of July 1, 2020. So uh, the recommendation as is. Any questions, comments? Chair, I'm going to have to vote no on this. I mean, um, we've got an agency that, that doesn't recommend this move forward. There's only one individual that submitted testimony with no comments. Um, I just don't believe that we should move bills forward that causes government to do some work that I don't see any support for. So I have, for that reason, I have to vote no. Okay. I believe the person who introduced it believed their community wanted it. So I, I, I support us moving it forward. Okay, no okay. testimony. And then um, I'll be doing it, reservations. All right. Um, just because uh, the note and we've given our uh, comments and, and testimony. But I, I think the community should be allowed to talk on it too. So, you know, even though it's the minimum testimony, uh, I was still supporting but with reservations. All right, thank you. Thank you for the comments. Anyone else wish to comment? Okay. If not, vote, please. Uh, voting on House Bill 1423, House Draft 1. The recommendation is to pass as is. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Representative Kaufman, no. no. Representative Cullen with reservations. Representative Hanohano. Um, I have some um, slight reservations, but I want to see this move forward and making sure the um, voice of the people are heard. But I'll just vote for WR at this time. Um, yeah. Representative Kawakami excused. Representative Lee excused. Representative Fale. With reservation. Representative Thielen. Aye. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, um, same recommendation. Um, you already heard that I'm going WR, but you know it's only because I just want to make it move forward and the people to be um, heard. And um, same recommendation um, as it is for the committee, but I will vote in WR. Okay. Um, OMH okay. members, same as wall members, with the exception of Representative Thielen, and um, noting the reservations from. Chair, Vice Chair, and Representative Fale, and the no vote from Representative Kaufman, excuse members uh, Lee, 
and Kawakami uh, measure is adopted. Thank you very much. On House Bill 738, House Draft 1, um, the recommendation is to hold. We'll take the vote. You want to hold it? Yeah. Mic button. Uh, voting on House Bill 738, House Draft 1, the recommendation is to hold Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Representative Kaufman? Aye. Representative Cullen? Aye. Representative Hanahano? Aye. Representative Kawakami excused? Representative Lee excused? Representative Holly? Uh, aye. Representative Phelan? Aye. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. We're adjourned. No. Oh, yeah. Online. Do you have one?